Hi everyone, my name is uh, Rich Sud, this is known as TLM01 on the forums. Uh, today I wanted to go over some quick brake stuff on a V8 Vantage. Um, everything I'm doing is going to be on my car unless I state otherwise. Some quick things to note about my car is it is modified, so you'll notice I have longer studs than you'll see on a standard car. I also have two-piece brake rotors. Um, I've got some H&R springs, which you can't really see from that angle, but they're in there. Um, one of the things I wanted to do today was go over these pads that I've got. I got them from Velocity AP. Uh, they are Porterfield RS, uh, excuse me, R4S pads. They're a street rated pad, but I decided to take them on the track to see how they pulled up. Um, so today we're gonna look to see how they, uh, how they held up on that. Um, I haven't seen them yet, um, so I have no idea what to expect. They seem fine, they're driving fine. I've been driving around for the last few days uh, since, the, uh, since the track day um, and haven't noticed any issues whatsoever. Um, obviously it's been raining, so my car is pretty nasty, so excuse that. Um, but here we're just going to go over really quickly how to do a brake job because it's actually pretty easy to do. Um, I'm going to note another couple quick things. One thing you've got on each of the brake pads is a um, sensor, which mine's not even hooked up. You can kind of see it right here. Um, it's actually pretty loose and I'm pretty sure it's because it's uh, broken. Um, if you don't have this hooked up to your pad, it's not going to do anything uh, whatsoever. You just want to make sure you have it zip tied out of the way so it doesn't get caught in any, any of the brakes or suspension. Uh, or especially not the wheels, otherwise it'll pull the wire. Um, what this does is it tells you if your brakes are overheating, worn out, whatever. Um, so if you do disconnect this or you just pull it off the pad, um, which I don't use these, I don't even use uh, the tire pressure monitoring system anymore, um, which again, it's, it's gonna be uh, a matter of how much work you wanna put into your car. So if you want something stress-free, leave everything hooked up, don't modify your car. Uh, but I can't leave well enough alone, so here I am. So first thing we're gonna do, um, obviously I've got the wheel off. Safety is always the first concern. Um, so I'm using jack stands, some wheel chocks, everything else to make sure the car does not move while I'm, uh, while I'm working on it. Um, something else you're gonna notice uh, before I start is you'll see that um, if you can in, in the video, you'll see that some of my um, clear coat on the brake calipers is flaked off. Um, I don't know if that's gonna be a common occurrence for most Aston Martins. I know it is on mine because I do track my car um, and I drive it pretty hard. The brakes get really, really hot and that's gonna cause the um, clear coat to deteriorate. Uh, it's not hard to fix. Unfortunately, it's labor intensive because you have to pull the calipers off, which means bleeding the brake system, um, removing the caliper, everything else. So it does add up. Uh, however, it's just cosmetic. I haven't had any issues with the paint underneath having um, any rust on the caliper or anything else. So um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to knock these retaining pins out. Um, we've got two of them. Um, generally, you just need a hammer and a uh, and a pick. You can start it off. Just get it going. Um, once it's pushed through. You can set that in there. You just got to be careful not to slip and hit the caliper itself. Um, and once we've done that, there goes the clip. So there's one. And the other one pops right out. So there's our two uh, retaining pins, nice and easy. Um, one thing you can do on this is you want to get the pad to get loose from here because over time as you're using the brakes, the caliper behind it is going to be pushing against it. Um, the, the pistons are going to be pushing against it so it's going to tighten up on there. Um, there's going to be a little bit of skimming so in order to wiggle it out of there you need to push it back. You can do that with something like a screwdriver if you have a proper brake tool that's even better. Um, but all we're going to do is wedge this guy in there and actually we don't even need to do that. Work on it. You can grab it by the the back plate and wiggle it around and out comes the pad. So looking at this, it looks like they held up quite well. Um, don't know how well this is going to focus, but uh, there's no unevenness to it. There's no uh, chunking of the rotor or, uh, or the pad. So it looks like it did pretty well. The only concern with that pad on a racetrack is that it's uh, not rated for it. So from really high uh, speeds, when you start getting on the brakes, it's actually going to not stop you too well. Um, which can be a concern if you're going into some uh, sharp corner. Um, so, uh, as far as these are concerned, they're great pads. Um, they're a street rated pad, they don't dust at all, there's very little noise. I think that's because the amount of taper, if you can see that, um, there's a very sharp taper to it. So you actually have um, the contact patch itself is relatively small. Uh, luckily we've got big brakes on this car, so it adds up uh, anyway. But um, I think that's where a lot of the lack of initial bite comes from is because that taper is so much that it's done to be smooth, which for a street car is perfect. On the track, not so ideal. Um, so all you would do for this is you do that on both sides. Um, once you get your new pads, you wanna make sure that you've put the pistons all the way back into the caliper as far as you can go. 
Um, there are special tools for that. Um, if you do want to sort of jimmy rig everything, which isn't ideal, but you can do it, you can use a flathead screwdriver. And um, you're basically just going to go ahead and push the caliper pistons back in. And it doesn't take much to do. And you want to be very careful. Right now, I don't even know if I'm pushing them at all. Um, then you just slide in your pad, and that's it. Um, when we put this back together, we're just doing it in reverse order. So you've got these pins. You pop it through the back. It'll line up with the holes of the pads. You do that on both of them. Take your hammer, and you're just going to gently tap the back side of the pin until it comes all the way back through. And again, you want to be a bit more careful than I am. You can put this guy back in there. Just like that. It's a bit more of a push on this. You have to use more force. And that's it. That's uh, that's how you do your brakes. So um, that's all there is to it. Looking at the rotors, they seem fine. I did have a bit of an off-track excursion, um, which was interesting to say the least. But uh, um, everything seems fine. I'm pretty sure it knocked my alignment out. I've got a bit of a shake in the steering wheel above 50 miles an hour, um, but everything seems to be pretty fine. Um, and that's that's it. So we're gonna repeat the same thing for the backside. Um, there's no real difference, but uh, you do that for each four corners and you're done. It's, uh, it's actually not that hard to do. So, um, anyway, this is Rich, and uh, again, I go by TLM01 on the internet. Um, if you have any questions, please post them up. Thanks.